all right so here we have the new ds 1000 z series from rigo it's their latest four channel oscilloscope and it's at a very good price of this is the base model the one 1074z and this is only 585 american it's a 70 megahertz one gig of sample per second with a 12 mega points op memory and 24 mega points optional memory so let's power it on uh, boot up time isn't amazingly quick and there is a fan and it's quite noticeable but eh, I guess it's it's fine Alright, so now we're booted up. What I have here is the calibration signal going in. You can take a closer look at it. Here. Um, and then um, vertical. It's your signal. And um, vertical horizontal on this scope is just like on any, but you do have the annoying multiplex control knobs. So you're going to need to select which channel you want to change. And if you do forget, it does become a big hassle in the end. So the probes that come with the Rigel unit are, um, I'd say acceptable. The ground hook right here. Let me see if I can get this to focus. Okay, it doesn't want to focus, so the ground hook is incredibly tight. It has a very tight ground hook, and I mean, focus, goddammit. Why? Okay, I'm gonna have to go to manual focus. Give me a second. Okay, nice and clear. Alright, so the probes on this thing, these, this piece is pretty crap. And if you shake it, it, it falls right off. It's a pain to use frequently. You'll be probing a signal. You don't know where it went because you find, whoops, it fell off. So operation, otherwise this is just like any oscilloscope that you may have. There's not much of a difference here. And um, it does have a an intensity graded waveform display, which I mean for this price of scope is, is that's amazing. Previously you could only get that on your multi thousand dollar Agilent and whatnot. Alright, so let's put this back down. Okay, so let's um let's take a look at some of the key features. And of course it's being a pain in the ass and not triggering. Okay, so you have your run stop up here, control, single, nothing much here. And I don't understand the single button. Look, you have a mode right here, auto, normal, single. I mean, it's nice that they were thoughtful enough to put this here, but you have a single here and you have a single here. Why? I don't understand this. And um, you do have your uh, decodes. For example, we could decode SPI and parallel and RS-232. However, remember that decode and triggering are different options, like trigger, you have edge, pulse, video, slope, video, pattern, duration. Triggering on this is incredibly powerful with serial and all of these um, various trigger modes. So, further going on, um, we have the 12 mega point standard memory with a 24 meg optional, so if we go in have 12 meg right now because we have two channels on. If we turn the second channel off, we get the, our 24 meg option. An interesting thing to note on these scopes is that this is not like your regular Agilent with two interleaved analog digital converters. This has a single four channel converter, so right now we carry 500 mega samples a second. You can go to one giga sample, turn, turn second channel on. We go to 500 mega samples, turn your third channel on, you go to 250 mega samples, and as well as with the fourth. 
So keep this in mind, if you do need a higher sample rate, then the scope is not for you. But for a $585 scope, I really can't complain about this. Alright, so um, moving on to the user interface. We have menus on both sides and you can't turn these menus off. Which is honestly a pretty shitty decision on Rigel's part. I mean, it's, 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 a, it's annoying. But, I mean, I understand the uh, menu on this side. It's pretty good. I mean, you can do your add your measurements onto the bottom, V max, voltage peak peak, voltage top, base, amplitude, and um, when you do get to the max, it starts pushing them backwards. And um, we can add some channel two measurements as well, because that's how we want to do this. And maybe a channel three, and let's just put in a channel four just for the just for shits and giggles. Okay, so looking at the scope itself, it's a very Nice, solidly built unit. Feels of quality. All of the membranes are nice. Plastics feel pretty good. Not as good as the Tektronix, but all of the knobs are pushable and, um, and whatnot. And we're not triggering anymore. So let's, let's trigger and get out of zoom. And what's annoying is, look, I press this once and it turns it off. What? But now if I press it... It's, sometimes it selects itself, you just have to be aware. And normally you press it once and it turns on. So if it's selected down here, it's unlike the other ones where it has to pull up the man, menu. The menu's already been pulled up. Like, let's say, let's select channel 3. We go into acquire, and then, oh, never mind. And then it turns off. So if you are in this menu, it will turn off just like a regular scope, but I'd much rather have it turn off by itself. So with the intensity waveform data display, it has 64 levels. I don't have a waveform generator to do this. That'll be my next purchase. But honestly, if we do look at just this um, crap signal coming in from my hand, we can, uh, let's, turn, let's turn down the memory depth, shall we? It's getting a bit sluggish. Okay, and um, horizontal time base. Okay, so. If we do look at this, we can see that we do have the really nice intensity graded waveform displays on this. Which, I mean, is a fantastic feature. It gives you that analog like phosphor. This is a 64 level. This is a scope with 64 levels in it. Which, I mean, is for most tasks, I'd say is enough. But, I mean, the Rigel 2000 series goes to 256 levels. But, I mean, I'm fine with 64 levels. It's a significant improvement from my old Siglent bullshit, which, yeah, let's let's not get let's not get started on that scope. So a big selling feature is the massive memory in this thing. I mean, look, memory depth. We can go to 24 mega points. I mean, compared to your uh, rival. Let me zoom in for a second. Look at that, 24 meg, compared to your measly. I, I would say, I wouldn't say measly, it's, it's still pretty good for its time. Your one mega point on the DS was 1074Z, and the, and the wimpy 2.5k points on the Tektronix scopes. Alright, so let's, um, now we have the memory depth covered. Rigel software disables the, uh, the, what is it, 500 microvolt vertical division on this scope. However, uh, thanks to a couple of forum members, I think Codeboy2k may have been one of them, don't quote me on that. We have unlocked the 500 microvolt. Oh yeah, look at that 500 microvolt. Previously, that was only available on the 2000 series, but now we can go to the, um, we can go to 500 microvolts on this. A big selling point of this scope is its four channels. Which makes it good for things such as um, SPI decoding. Previously, with your 2000 series scopes, I mean, you, you want to do SPI and you can only do MISO or MOSI. It would be, um, you can only see half the conversation at a time. And that was really quite annoying. It's like only hearing one side of a conversation. Can't really do much. But with the four channels, you can go to math and then decode. Yeah, look, you can do SPI. And you can do MISO and MOSI. So this is 
I think this is possibly the largest selling point of the scope, is the massive sample memory, the um, waveform graded display, and the four channels. All for a very low price. I mean, this is what, $585? It's an amazing price for these scopes. I mean, you get the comparable thing from Agilent. It's what, four or $5,000? Yeah, sure, the Agilent might have a better warranty, it might have some extra features and things like that, but hey, for most of us hobbyists, this is good enough. And um, I forgot to mention the 30,000 waveform per second update rate. So, I mean, this does have the high waveform update rate that we see in the scopes coming out. I know, like, Siglent's SDS2000 series has a 110k waveform updates, and then, um, the DS2000 has a, what, 80,000, 80k or 30k waveforms, but 30k waveforms for what you should be doing normally will be um, more than enough. I mean, with the DS1000, it was what, 800 waveforms, and we were still, we still had no problems with that. So I, so no complaints right there. And um, also Agilent's 3000 series with that sexy 1 million waveforms per second. So this does have the waveform record. I'm almost out of time, sorry if I get a bit rushed. It does have the record, but it doesn't have that nice rotary jog knob on the 2000 series. It has that feature, but it's not as nice as on the 2000 series. And yes, we do have the um, ref, the mask testing, but yeah, the mask testing is, isn't as good as on the 2000 series either. I wish I could have enough time to show you, but also options, it does have the software options. So um, here are my installed options. I did use the key gen, I mean come on, I can't afford 180 bucks per option, so I have the run triggering window and the edge, then I have the um, decode, the record, and then the memory depth. So I mean it's a, this is a very well featured scope, I mean you could probably compare it to the, with some Tektronix ones, but Honestly, I mean, for this scope, this is a ho still a hobbyist level scope, so if you're looking for intense reliability or um, incredible support, look elsewhere. Rigel would probably not be the brand for you. So this is pretty much all the time I've got, so uh, thank you very much.